All right, I'm going to go over a project that I'm calling Word Art. Basically, you're going to take a picture and turn it into a Word Art, which will essentially be a clipping mask that you're going to use some warping to. Nothing too complicated. Here's two examples. Uh, one, the word apple in a word. Apple in an apple. <laughs> and basketball in a basketball. Notice that I put the word basket above the word ball. So one thing to think about when you're doing this, like banana. Banana is a long word. And if I have a picture of a banana that's long, that'll fit nicely in there. But like basketball, the word ball would have fit fine in there. But the long word basketball would not have fit well. So you've kind of got to decide if you need to break your word into multiple words. And then you can even put two text boxes in there. But you must remember, it all needs to be one object when you get ready to do your clipping mask to put the words inside. So I'm going to do an example. I've got a Christmas tree. I have gone ahead and removed the background of this and masked it out. And that's really important because you actually need to turn this into a smart object after you've put the mask on it. Okay, so I've got my mask on it. I'm going to right click it and convert this to a smart object and I'm going to duplicate it. That's control J so that I have a copy of the tree. Now you need a layer that's going to be behind everything. It'll be super subtle, um, but I'm going to go ahead and pull that underneath for now. Then between the two layers of your object, you need to have your words or word or whatever. Now I'm doing a more complicated one here just to show you. Uh, you know, there's not too many words that are going to fit in a tree because really about all that would fit in there nicely would be like a two-letter word um, because a tree is so narrow. Otherwise, it's only going to take up like a little part of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my text tool and I'm just going to type the word tree. Um, I'll turn this top layer off so you can see it. And we want it to be as big as it possibly can and cover as much of the object as it can. And really to do this, I need to probably make this go the other direction. So up here in the corner, I can switch my type to going down like this. Um, so I'm going to do that first and then make it bigger um, so that it takes up much more of this tree. Now, this still doesn't fix things, as you can imagine, because the bottom needs to be bigger than the top. Now, before I turn this into a smart object, I can use the text warp feature and at the bottom make it bigger. Um, so like there is shell lower. Um, let me switch this to horizontal. Shell lower, that looks like it works pretty good. It's kind of shelling it out towards the bottom. Um, and that's kind of what I'm looking for. And you can also do distortion, but that doesn't work well with this one um, at all. I can do it that way a little bit, I guess. So you can decide to do that if you wish. Now, because these letters are spaced apart, I may need to modify the tracking of the letters so they're closer together. Um, if your words are going you know, left to right, same thing. If you have two words on top of each other, you may need to modify the letting. But I only have one word, so I don't need to do that. Okay, so I've got it generally the right shape-ish. Okay, and then at this point, I can take my text layer and convert it to a smart object. If you have two words stacked on top of each other or three words stacked on top of each other, put all of them into one smart object. So select all the layers and convert them all into one smart object, okay? So you will, everybody will have the object, the words as a smart object, the object, and then a the background. Okay, so here we are. I've got everything as smart objects. No layer masks visible because all the layer masks are hidden inside the smart objects. That's important. All right, so we're going to clipping mask. I'm going to turn off this bottom layer. We're going to clipping mask the tree into the words. So you can see like that's the effect that we're going after and it needs to look kind of like a tree. Doesn't look that great. I'm going to unclipping mask it for a second and um, move my words to top so I can see. And I'm going to go ahead and warp the smart object by pressing control T and then right clicking. So we're not using text warp anymore. This is a smart object. We're using regular warp, which puts kind of a, you can't really see it, but there's a grid over top of everything. When you start moving, you can kind of see. And then now I can grab a hold of the edges of these little lines that are in here and start trying to pull this out more so that it takes up more of the tree. Because that is our goal is to make it look more like the tree. My T is the only thing that's just not looking the best here. And then my R, in the process of doing that, keeps falling off of the tree. So you kind of have to mess with it a little bit, okay? All right, so let's say that's good. That's totally fine. Now let's move it back and clipping mask this in. Okay, so, I mean, it's okay. 
<laughs> but you really can't kind of get the whole tree vibe so much. So if I turn the tree on behind it, you can obviously see all of it. But what we're going to do is add a layer mask to the tree layer, the bottom layer, and then we're going to hide everything. Control I on the layer mask to make it black so that now we can paint on the layer, layer mask in white with a hard paintbrush. And you kind of want to paint where the edges might would be of your object. Now, for instance, here on my basketball, I went all the way around the edge of the basketball. And on my apple, I went all the way around the edge and the stem because I thought the stem was kind of important for you to tell it's an apple. So for the tree, for example, we know that it's going to be important that we be able to see the top of the tree. So I can paint in white up here and bring back in the top of the tree. And I'm going to let it run into the T a little bit. So, you know, we want it to not... We want to keep the words in there, but we also want to kind of add some additional things. And then you can go to the bottom and maybe fix that bottom part of your tree. And this tree has quite a bit down here, but um, you want to paint it as much as you can there. And I don't know if this will look right. Like if I put the bottom part along the E, I guess it's okay. All right, there we go. And then that kind of lets us finish off with the shape. And you kind of have to just decide, like, where's the spot that looks best. And you could connect your words. Like, I could go in here where the T and the R meet and kind of, like, connect those a little bit if I wanted to. Um, or, like, here to kind of connect it a little bit, you know, or whatever. Probably I should zoom up to do this as well. But I didn't, and that's fine. It's okay. Um, but anyway, that's essentially it. You can try to connect your letters to make it look better. But we want it to look like the object, but also the word. It's a word art, right? All right, once you're done with that, you're going to put your background behind it. And we do not want the background to be obnoxious like this. So we're gonna add two adjustment layers to the background. That's your little moon button. I'm gonna add a um, exposure first so we can turn the exposure down. We want this thing to be like chill in the background, right? All right, so I've got that turned down. And then we need to get rid of the color because that's too much as well. So I'm going to go in and do a hue saturation and colorize. And then we can make this all shades of one color, which is going to look a lot better. If you wanted to go like kind of green to kind of match what's going on here, I could kind of do that. I could make it like brighter or whatever if I wanted to, or I could still darken it some as well. All right. And that's really essentially it. You could add, um, you know, some additional features if you wanted to, but honestly, um, you know, that pretty much does it. Now, I have my pieces of my tree underneath these layers, and that's not working, so I need to move those up. There we go, so that we actually get the edge of that. So the only things that should have that color change would be that background. Otherwise, everything goes above. So you've got your object sandwiched between your object or text, and then you're painting on a white mask to bring in the parts that you want. And then you've got your background that has the color change, etc. And remember, of course, you can still always press Control T if you did need to make changes to your text. It is on um, essentially like a layer mask, you know, it's a clipping mask. So whatever you change, you can still change. You can still right click and warp it. You could still move these out some more if you felt like you needed to um, or whatever. And that's basically it. So I'm sure you can come up with way better ideas than me. Um, but you just want to come up with something that looks kind of neat. Um, that personifies that object, but within text. All right, good luck.